you have a uh, Pastor Taylor, would you lead us in invitation? I'd like to do that. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be here today to do the business of the Cherokee people. We pray that you will be with everybody who is here, represented here today, as they work for the betterment of our citizens. We pray that you will be with us as we leave here, give us traveling graces to bring us all safely back here. Pray that you will be with our servicemen and women as they fill the cap get to keep us safe. Be with us and our families throughout the holiday season. Let us to, to remember we are truly blessed. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Roll call. Honey. We have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, same sign. Let's move. Okay. Uh, first report Claremore Service Unit. George, how are you this afternoon? You should have my report there in front of you. Outpatient visits were up last month. Uh, we had almost 25,000 outpatient visits. Can you not hear him? It's what? Let's get it out of my Y'all can hear him okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. George, if you could speak just a little bit. Can you not hear me? Thank you. Now? Let me. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> we, we had almost 25,000 outpatient visits last month. Uh, our uh, fiscal year. Collections, we finished the year, uh, we collected uh, almost 26.5 million. Uh, that was up, I think, 4% from the previous year. Some good news, uh, as of November 1st, we are told by area. We are told by area office that we can start sending. Uh, we have a orthopedic practice in Tulsa that will start seeing our patients, so they don't have to go all the way to. The that's, that's great news. <clears throat> um, we've hired another full-time OBGYN doctor, Dr. Allison Hubert. She started on the 22nd of October. And we have started uh, construction. Uh, if you've been to the hospital uh, in the last few days, in the last couple weeks, we ha you have seen barriers up for construction back in the emergency room. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Councilor Austin and Hoskins for coming by. We um, had a uh, discussion about uh, contract health folks and I think uh, Councilor Austin's found a solution for that, and we are moving forward with that. And so that, uh, from what I understand, is no longer an issue. Thank you. Any questions? No, it sounds like a great report. Councilor Buzzer. Yeah, and so what, what are we doing with the contract? They are moving across. I'm told that they are going to move across the street. Okay. Um, the uh, housing authority has a, has a vacant property over there, and they're going to move in, in there. And that's good. Even the closer, the better. Yes, sir. And probably not that many people are going to be visiting, but at least it's there for the convenience of those people. So appreciate your work. Yes, sir. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilor Austin. Yeah. Uh, directly across the parking lot uh, to the east is a fourplex that is owned by the uh, Housing Authority. And uh, it's really been used primarily for uh, short-term 
rentals. It really isn't suitable for long-term living, but it's it's very high quality building. It just is not a high quality place for living, <laughs> but it's a very high quality place for somebody who's in the staff, staff of the hospital. Uh, it literally is the same parking lot. Uh, they don't have to change parking lots. They can point out the door and say, walk in that door, and, and that's where you're at. So it's as close as you can physically be and not be within the building. Yeah. Um, any other questions here? Mm -hmm. Councillor Anglin. George, my great-grandson was born over in Claremore Indian Hospital last week, and your staff was outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. So, well, thank you. I'll first pass, first I'll, one, I'm getting, in, I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass that on. Thank you. They did an outstanding job, and I told each one of them. Well, yeah. good. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. George, great report. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, Dr. Charles Graham. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Charles. Well, I was going to talk a little bit about what George said. I'm glad he got it uh, done. We uh, finally have a, a semi-permanent home for our uh, CHS staff. And uh, if you all have any problems, you know, let us know about it. We're going to try to get the word out. It is closer than our first uh, foray into that, which was four miles down the road. And I want to thank George and the area office publicly, too. They were doing everything they could to try to uh, get us a place inside the facility uh, for our staff uh, and and they flat out don't have enough room for um, everyone that they have to put in there and uh, it became apparent that it was going to be very cramped and so we uh, had this opportunity arise that Councillor Austin and uh, Gary Cooper had raised and so uh, I think it's going to end up being a very very good solution uh, and location for us so I want to just mention one other thing and then I'll um, take any questions that you all have from our report or otherwise. I sent you all uh, an email out uh, late Friday that talked about a, a recall of uh, <coughs> test strips and it's a nationwide FDA recall. It's a level one or a class one recall which is the most uh, serious type uh, that FDA uh, classifies them as. And it means the devices could cause serious injury or death. And what it was were the strips that are used uh, to <coughs> test people's blood for uh, clotting factors. Anyone that was on the blood thinner warfarin uh, is the uh, generic name or the chemical name, uh, Coumadin um, and um, uh, Coumadin and Janovan is uh, are the, the uh, brand names that people might uh, have heard of. We uh, immediately, and I put this in the email, immediately started meeting uh, internally on how to deal with this, and we spent um, last week, the weekend, <coughs> and we will be spending this week contacting patients directly by phone, uh, any that we have in our database that are on these medications. Uh, and we do run in, in many of our clinics anticoagulation clinics to make sure these people stay on, keep, stay in the therapeutic range of this medication. Um, and so these patients are used to coming in regularly uh, every two to four weeks usually unless they're very very stable and have been for a long time the doctor may bring them in or the pharmacist at a, a more uh, lengthened uh, return visit but uh, we think we'll be able to you know get the majority of these people contacted by uh, both phone and letters. We're going to send out letters uh, to everyone too that we have on our list and basically we're just asking them to come back in and get checked with a regular blood test instead of uh, using the little finger stick and the strips and the machine which makes it a little easier on them when you have to get checked that often. We're going to, until we know that the strips that uh, are back out on the market are in good shape, they'll be having to go get the regular blood tests at the lab where they take it out of your vein and, and we test it that way. So uh, I feel like our staff got on this very, very quickly and uh, we're doing everything I can that we can for the safety of our patients and uh, we wanted you all to know about it. Um, we didn't get notified by our wholesaler uh, until Friday, actually. And um, we had already been planning for a day or so because one of our staff saw it uh, 
in a uh, article and then I actually had a call from a patient uh, or a caregiver of a patient asking about it so uh, it got brought to our attention kind of from several instances at one time but uh, they're just starting to notify folks late last week and early this week from the manufacturer perspective so again I applaud our staff for all they've done to get on top of it and if, if you all have any uh, concerns that you hear from patients uh, tell them they just need to get into the lab uh, to get their blood uh, tested we are trying to get everyone's orders already in the system so that when they show up at any of our facilities the orders will already be there for these tests that they need uh, but if they run into any problems have them contact uh, either the health center uh, administrator, the CEO, or the medical directors of either our hospital or clinics, and they'll make sure that they get taken care of. So with that, I'll uh, close my comments, and if you all have any questions about our report or anything I've reported, I'm at your discretion here. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Green? Council Crittenden. Dr. Green, um, we had the public health meeting uh, they said they were going to meet again. Has that happened? We've had a phone call. Our staff's had a phone call with the primary author of that report. Um, and uh, she was very apologetic about the disruption that it caused in our communities and among our uh, tribe. And uh, she was planning on trying to make some statements available uh, for us to release to you all. Uh, we've also gathered the remainder of the information that you all had asked us about, and we'll be preparing to give it to you during the public health service, uh, public health committee. Uh, and and uh, one of the things that you'd asked for was to see what those numbers looked like for every other census tract in all of our 14 county area. So our staff have been working on that. So yes, we've been following up on it. Plus, we uh, I think I mentioned this before we. Uh, have had a couple of meetings with this group called the Lynn Institute who wants to work with us and uh, because of the the public interest as well as the press that's been around uh, Stillwell and Adair County they want to work with us to sort of further study the issue there locally and help us so uh, we're going to be talking with them about uh, aiding us in that effort that sounds good and any any positives that come out of it great but uh, like we talked about that's uh that's my hometown and um it was described as sound and you know some of the things we discussed before we start just hammering my old hometown i want to make sure that it's a, a a righteous study but thank you for for that and just something that i uh, appreciate you looking at today there's an email about a, a dental patient and sent that to you and Dr. Jones, and she's, uh, if you don't mind getting back with me on okay, that. I haven't seen that yet, but I'll look at it as soon and, as this uh, is over. The Steelwell Dental Clinic's been in the design stages for a while, uh, and last month I'd ask you any progress on the getting the design down. We're, we're still in the design phase, and we're actually re designing more than just dental. It's designing a whole new facility for it, so it's taken a little while. Um, I think we're going to be making some, uh, you know, final decisions on that need to be made this week, uh, and then it'll take us on down the rest of the way to getting it completed. We hope, we hope. I'm, I don't really want to commit to this yet, but we hope uh, shortly after the first of the year that we'll be able to start uh, doing some demolition and construction. All ahead. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Taylor. So I just have a quick question. We, we've talked in recent weeks about the uh, recent months about the lactation specialist. When babies are delivered at Hastings Hospital, do they get a visit? Does the mother get a visit from the lactation specialist before she leaves? <laughs> I see some. I hope um, there's some yeses some shaking. New mothers <laughs> nodding their head. <laughs> They're supposed to all get a visit. Yes. <laughs> well, I see at least two that have. So. <laughs> all right. Um, Thank you, Taryn. <laughs> Breastfeeding is good. We, we, yes. we uh, support that and push that very hard yep. with our new mothers. Okay, thank you. Councilor Buzzer. Yes, just uh, Dr. Grimmel, I talk a little bit about, I don't know where I read this, about the uh, 
pharmacists are going are the doctors only going to be able to prescribe uh, pain medicine for six days, seven days? Is that so? The, the new law, um, a new law went into effect in Oklahoma on November one, yeah. and we had had a small work group uh, of folks that were from both our electronic health record as well as our providers working on how that we would implement that new law in our system and um, we've developed a new um, pain management contract or long-term pain contract I think it's called as well as a, uh, a new informed consent because of the changes in the law and yes you're correct uh, that the first two prescriptions uh, are seven days only worth of medications each uh, and they have to go into this uh, longer informed consent about you know putting them on an opioid uh, pain medication and then on from the third one on and and I'll ask Miss Odell if I say something wrong to stand up or start shaking her hand behind me but um, that's when the long-term uh, pain contract would need to be discussed. This long-term pain contract, among other things besides explaining it, talks about potentially uh, having the patient step down off of those medications mm -hmm. at some point if, if it's appropriate. That is between the provider and the patient. But um, yes, that law went into effect on November 1, and we're trying to do what we can to implement it in our system. And uh, we were concerned there might be a number of patient complaints, tried to make you all aware of that. I haven't heard any yet, uh, you know, personally. I won't say there's not any out there, but um, it is what it is. We have to, you know, comply with that. Are we still contracting with the pain management company? We have a pain <coughs> management. Uh, we, we, yes, we are with some. I don't know the <coughs> names of them, but, yes, we're still doing that. And it will affect them, too, you know, whatever. If it applies to any opioid prescribing, those those providers will have to do it as well. The governor, you may have read about, there's one emergency rule that was passed by the governor, um, and it only dealt with surgical patients. So that people that, and because there was a big concern about that, like orthopedic surgical patients, that, you know, may have pain for multiple weeks at a time, you know, to have them come back or, or you know, uh, come back in seven days when they might still be homebound. If a doc thinks they're going to be homebound or they had this surgery, they can do the first two prescriptions at one, at one time, but the second one has to be dated seven days out so that it's not filled at, at once. So, well, thank you for keeping on top of that because I'm sure we'll, we'll be hearing about it also. So, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, any other questions? Just a comment. Councilor Warner. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Graham, I want to say thank you uh, to you, uh, several people on your uh, in your team, uh, Mr. Stephen Carey, uh, Jerry Kaufman, Dr. Stillberg, uh, Brian Hale. You know, they, um, we had a, a you know, a Cherokee, young Cherokee man had an accident. I know it's not necessarily the the answers that the family is looking for, but they're very grateful, and so am I, that, that we've been working on this, and I've reassured them that we'll continue to work, and if anything changes, but I just want to say I appreciate you guys looking into that. I was very sorry to hear about yes, that, and, yeah. and we'll continue well, to help and, however we can. I really need uh, his brother, a uh, very blessed individual, plays within the Mets organization, and uh, this young man got a visit. Uh, he actually plays with Tim Tebow, and Tim Tebow came by to visit this young man in the hospital the other day, so I thought that was pretty encouraging. So, yeah. yep. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, we did a survey to see if we had brought everything up to par. Uh, have they come in and done the final survey yet? They have not yet. Uh, every Monday, of course they may not come on a Monday, it could be any day, but usually it's a Monday. Every Monday until about noon or one, I uh, wait to hear if they are here yet. But no, they have not come back yet. Uh, we have, as you know, we've uh, had a consultant group in working with us too to continue to scour our, our policies and our processes, uh, to continue to stay on top of some of the things uh, that we want to make sure that uh, we're in top form, you know, whenever they do show up. So 
Uh, again, I have said this on other occasions, I feel like we're in, in really good shape for when they come back and um, have those uh, three particular areas of concern very well, you know, taken care of, corrected, and improved, so. Wonderful. Uh, I want to ask you a question. We talked last meeting about the possibility of putting our, uh, our, our pharmacology, I think it was, on the website. Is that going to happen? You know, I've talked to some people about that, and I think it's possible. Um, and so it's being looked into right now to put our, uh, um, our formulary, our Form pharmacy business. formulary on the website. Uh, do, you, do you know if any things you're working on it right now? We have to work through, I guess, Turkey Nation's IT to get it put on there, but he is, he is working on it for us. Can, can you tell me, are we going to be able to update our website on uh, health care? <coughs> Our IT people told me that they were going to be working on that, yes. And they, you know, they, there's a number of things that are out there, but they agree there are improvements that we can make, and uh, they were actually glad to have it asked about. Is it possible we could assign someone uh, that position of keeping it updated on things like the testing strips or things like, uh, you know, the pharmacology uh, information to keep them current? Uh, even, even exactly dental appointments. Now, at our last meeting, we talked about the dental appointments and when they could call in. And I received two emails that uh, in Muskogee, the dental time to call in is different than what it is in Tahlequah. And this is the kind of thing I think that our constituents want to know and, and hear about. And I think a website, a dedicated website to healthcare where you can get all the information would really benefit uh, our constituents and keep them informed and of what time to call where. and. Uh, to, to make these things happen. Do you all agree? Okay. Is that possible? I think that yes. can be done. It can be done, yes. <laughs> Dr. Grimm, how long do you think it would take to get this done? <laughs> Are we talking? Much like what I said about uh, Mr. Crittenden's time promise that I didn't really make. Uh, first of the year. Let, let me uh, talk to them first before I, I will come back and talk to you about it at next health committee. Well, it sounds to me like we might create a new job here with somebody who can uh, be assigned to that position. You know, I mean, it sounds to me like it, it's the job waiting to be taken. Okay, Councilor Crittenden. Yes, I was just wanting to let you know that I've had a few calls on the website thing. So, you know, different ones speak up, and, and I want to be sure that, you know, I'm sure a lot of us have heard that. So, um, phone calls I'm getting is sure in favor of that as well okay thank you you know I'll, I'll say this again too we've mentioned it in previous health committees but uh, and this doesn't exactly deal with everything that you all are talking about but uh, you know we have a patient portal available now so if a patient has come into our any of our sites uh, and they desire to uh, be enrolled into that our registration people will you know, take down their information, they'll get an email, and then it's a, an ability to sign on, create a password, and, and it allows them to get into their record uh, and be able to see results from certain things. Uh, and over time, I think we, not I think, I'm sure we will expand the availability of things that are available under that uh, patient portal. Uh, we really don't have that many patients that have availed themselves of that, and so, um, you know, we, we will continue to push it more, you know, within our own system. But, uh, you know, when anyone mentions that to you, you might ask them if they've, just ask them if they've signed up. Say, it may not answer all your questions, but it'll get you access to your information. Councillor Hatfield. Um, once you're in the Cherokee Nation system, health system, are you, are you in that system for every clinic that we... I mean, we should. You, if you're at Redbird, you should be at Muskogee. You should be at Tahlequah. Any okay. clinic can access records from another clinic. Yes, that's correct. Okay. How far back? Uh, like, um, I was born at Hastings. Would I? St am I in the system? I Not that know. far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I, every health system. I asked for it. Counselor Hatfield. Every every system. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I just mean our physicians wish it would go that far back. Many of them do. But whenever you switch to a new electronic health record. Too late. I, 
I don't know what I owe you, but I owe you something. <laughs> Okay with it. I know I'm old. <laughs> um, anytime you switch to a new electronic uh -huh. health record, which is what we did, one of the decisions you have to make is from your old record, how far back do you upload data? Okay. And I don't know if anyone's behind me that remembers. I want to say we went back three years. Mm -hmm. So so from the time we, that's why I said not that far like that. Uh, because a lot of our docs said, well, we want it back as far as you can make it go back. And that's just tons and tons and tons of, of data. Course. And so uh, we, we looked at what best practice was nationally. We have put everything that was three years prior, plus we started it, you know, in August of 2015. Okay. So, I mean, we're now, you know, now it's six years worth of data, six years plus worth of data that's in there. And um, that three-year window is, is, you know, if you're seeing your doctor regularly for problems, you're probably going to have visited at least once in the last three years. And so those sort of things, your problem list and all that would have been updated. And so, yeah, we only go back that far. Currently, we do have access still to that old record, though. Uh, we still have it available. And, and if we ever have to get into it for something, we can. Um, and it's still available, you know, if you I, – I maybe should be careful what I say about how far back we can go to like make things available you know to you if you ask for records we certainly can the three years prior plus this because it's all in our current record but so those records are still around though prior well, ones. I just have you know we have citizens that move back you know from our natural communities back into the jurisdiction and I have questions about that so yeah right. thank so you. tell them six years right okay. now thank you thank you chairman thank you Councilor Stick. Uh, thank you there's a <laughs> A few people on the contract health side of things that they're having a, like a car accident or something inside the jurisdiction. They live here, but their contract work is being sent to Claremore. Uh, do you know why that, that's happening? Or Prob I'm going to guess. Uh, and if you have names and things you know, we'll check it out on a case-by-case -case basis. But if they live in... The Claremore jurisdiction, you know, still in our 14 county, but in the Claremore jurisdictional area for inpatient, and a, most auto accidents are likely to be inpatient, then that would first go through Claremore uh, because we took the outpatient services, you know, from that, um, but not the inpatient. Uh, and then, you know, one of the things we use the 5% funding for is if uh, they're denied through Claremore for whatever then we can potentially pick them up with some of the 5% dividend money. If, if Claremore denies it, do they automatically send it back to the tribe? Or do they, or is there appeals? I, I, are, are you the new contract health? I'm going to have to turn around and ask the new contract health guy. Yeah, yeah we would go through it. Steve Carey. Claremore. Steve Carey. Yeah, and uh, we would run it through our review board. And like Dr. Griffith said, we have some 5% money that we use for, kind of what the board put out outside of the, the Cherokee County jurisdiction. ER, emergency situations, and patient things like that. Okay. I need to get your contact. That's I'll probably one of the second me. most uh, popular phone call. I yes, it is. is. Okay. All right. Can you send it to all of us? Hey, uh, Steve, would you send that to everyone again? I certainly will. Please. Okay. Uh, Dr. Grimm, any chance you could share with us how we're going to uh, staff the new clinic next fall? How's that going to come about? So we have a plan, uh, and it's going to unfold over a number of years. Um, we uh, have been meeting with a large group of departments within the tribe that are very excited and interested to work with us from career services and education and HR and tarot, and I'm sure I forgot, you know, one of the departments in that quick list, but uh, there's been a lot of interest in helping us to do that. Uh, we put together a small, smaller list of pay, uh, pro people that we need prior to opening, and we will be bringing it before you all uh, in the not too distant future. We're going to do a, a modification to our budget to ask that we be allowed to hire some positions early, and uh, we have the money. We will have the money to show you that is available to be able to do that. And I can't remember the exact numbers. I don't remember if Brian or Elizabeth remember off the top of their head, but anyway, we've identified some of those that we need four months out, uh, two months out, and one month out. Uh, and then after that, um, if, if we get the one side of the facility open on July 1, 
Uh, and if the FY 2019 budget for the interior actually materializes right now, we're still under continuing resolution, then we will get $26 million if we, you know, open on July 1 from the Indian Health Service. At that point, we will be able to open up much you know, wider set of positions, but uh, we'll be moving approximately 400 people from our current outpatient services over, plus these numbers, and it's a relatively small number, I don't remember off the top of my head, 30, 40 maybe, people that we are going to hire, uh, try to hire early, and you all will see that number when we bring it for you to do a modification to our budget. But um, And then um, we have a gap analysis already performed that shows uh, what we were given by IHS, what we are currently staffed, and what we're short uh, by department. Uh, and then once we get in, we will start, you know, making those sorts of hires on those departments that uh, we are going to prioritize. And we haven't prioritized them yet, uh, and we aren't going to go gangbusters right off the bat because the second half of our money won't come until FY 2020. Um, and if what happens in FY 2020 happens like it's happening now, I mean, we're on a continuing resolution now till December 7th, I think it is. And um, uh, that means that our 2020 budget wouldn't be approved yet for the remainder of the facility. So we're going to be cautious whenever we start that new facility. And we're looking at um, staffing it over multiple years. We're not going to be trying to hire 100 percent of those staff in one year. Uh, it'll be a multi-year phased project. Wonderful. So we all know where we're going to be then on July 1st, is that right? <laughs> That's what we're hoping. That's almost a promise I can make. Uh, 26 no, million reasons, reasons. yes. Because <laughs> okay. we can do this as part of yours because I'm not on you. Job. Okay, come yes. on in. Okay, yes. Uh, <laughs> from the AG's office, we'll have any other questions for Dr. Graham? Oh, you stay up here. Okay. Chrissy Nemo from the AG's <laughs> office, I think you Chrissy, all know uh, Chrissy from the AG's office asked us to visit with us today about something that we need to, to consider. So Dr. Graham talked about staffing, but before we can staff, we have to have the place done and open. Um, we came to you all back in April with a resolution to give Chief some more flexibility in signing contracts. Um, a big part of that was for the joint venture. It's been going really well. Um, we've only done a couple of those under the resolution. But we are concerned that we're going to have, that we're going to run into a problem. Um, we are just now starting to purchase the equipment for the new clinic. And it's really big, really expensive equipment. Um, there's a timeline on when things have to be bought. Some of the rooms have to be basically built around some of this equipment so they have to go in at certain times to avoid delay. Um, We're working with a company that actually does the, the, the initial um, POs for that. So they, go, they have our list of equipment and they go out, find it, find the best prices, find the vendors and order that equipment. Um, we're getting POs on the front end, but a lot of these things, because the, it's very technological equipment, it comes with warranties and service agreements. Um, some of the equipment will be leased instead of bought. And we think that we are quickly going to run into problems on negotiating contracts. Um, back to the discussion before, if there's language in there about arbitration and jurisdiction, um, monetary damages, that can hold us up. And the, the current process is, especially with health, they have their own contracts group, so they t take the first crack at this. and. Um, then it goes to finance contracts, and the um, finance contract group will go back and forth with vendors to try to get this language removed. If they can't get it out, it will come to the AG's office. We will usually work with the attorneys for these companies, and most of the time we're successful in getting that language removed. The problem is that can take months, and we are not going to have months in some of this equipment. So um, I, we met, um, we've been meeting the last two weeks internally to make sure our contracting process is streamlined, and I say we, it was health, finance, um, administration, planning and development, and we've got this process as tight as we can, but we still think that we're going to run into some fairly significant delays. And um, so I, I approached uh, Chair Shaw about um, drafting something to bring to council at the next health meeting. We're not going to call it a waiver of sovereign immunity because we're still going to say that we're not waiving sovereign immunity. but some type of resolution that would authorize the chief to sign the necessary contracts 
for equipping the joint venture and we could limit it to that project um, we also talked about providing I mean, we're talking about hundreds of contracts and there's big equipment but there's also trash cans and filing cabinets and office furniture and all of these things that are on a timeline that any one of them being held up can hold up other parts of the project and um, so we talked about bringing that before council I don't have anything I haven't put pen to paper just wanted to give you the information so if there's any feedback that we need um, in in trying to get a draft together limiting it to the joint venture and also providing on a monthly basis to council a list of contracts related to the joint venture that have been signed and it would just be the the name of the vendor what it was and the cost and then if you all because you can see any of those anyway but we're not going to bring you a stack you know it would be this this big if we put all of them but if we have a list and you all can see the list and then if you're interested in actually looking at any of the contracts then you can follow up and get copies of those but we all were just kind of trying to put our heads together to think of a process that would speed this up because we just know that we are going to run into problems that if we had enough time we could solve them but in some of these situations we are just not going to have the time to go back and forth with the general counsel of GE to try to get an arbitration provision removed from a contract and we um, we have to by July 1 have half of the building beneficial occupancy yeah, sure. <laughs> to get to get the money and um, part of that is getting you know even if the buildings finished there are certain pieces of equipment and things that have to be in there for that to occur and we obviously don't want that held up so that was our um, idea for a solution I, I talked to Councillor Shaw if anyone has comments on that something they else they would like to see in it not see in it um, and we will work with um, Talena before um, the next health committee meeting to get a get a draft and um, get it circulated to get any comments on that but that that would be our plan and if anyone wants to talk further if we need to meet in small groups to talk about any of the specifics we would be happy to do that as well <clears throat> is there a max or a minimum amount you're talking about and if the chief is signing off on these contracts that we approve uh, is his signature the only one on there or is dr. Grimm's signature on there? if currently if they fall under the last resolution that we did and they contain um, venue choice of law those types of things um, it's dr. Grimm's maybe as well and there may be other people but at least it has to be the chief and then whoever else and it a lot of those depend on the contracts again these are kind of standard forms that we're getting from these companies and and some of them may not even be a signature they may be an electronic yeah. you know we, we check a button and and they get the money and we get the equipment and there's a, a agreement associated with that my signatures on most of them and then the chiefs yeah I just didn't want to bombard our chief with five thousand dollar transactions well, and there's a routing form as yeah. well that AG's looked at and, and it comes with a routing form that they look, everybody's agreed to it okay and usually it's Dr. Graham's signature and then I just sign underneath okay all right it sounds good that you're getting ahead of this uh, because it is going to come up, we're going to have to make many transactions. Right. Quickly. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Council Brinton. Yeah. Oh, I was just curious. The hundreds of contracts. Who who makes that decision on who's getting these contracts? I mean, there's huge equipment, like you said, down to the to the trash cans. Um, is is this a kind of a tarot thing where? Yes. where people get to bid on the the trash cans and who's who's making the decisions on some of them are bid some of them are still sourced contracts I mean, who, who does that come down to health starts that process and usually the department that's involved unless it's something that would span all departments like chairs and desks and trash cans um, but as an example uh, we have a certain kind of uh, diagnostic imaging equipment in our all of our facilities right. so we want to stay standard with that and have one vendor that works on them and supplies them and things like that so that would be an example where we would likely sole source to the vendor that we currently use for everything but anything that is appropriate to be bid out you know other than those kind of things is is going to be done that way and tarot applies to all of that i mean you if it's sole source, it's because it's a reason that it's a piece of equipment that they have to have the standard. But outside of that, it would be it would be the 
the regular procure procurement process, just the same way we buy trash cans here. I can imagine all of these small businesses' ears are perked up at this time because they're going to need a lot of stuff. And, mm -hmm. of course, we all want them to have a fair shake at, at getting, getting some business. But thank you. And that company that does that initial with the equipment and stuff, they are a tarot vendor. Can you write the language to be specific towards health care only? That way it's not doesn't care cover in other departments and contract with the tribe. No, we were, we're t for this we're talking purely for the joint venture, for the for the outpatient clinic. Okay. So it, it, it we will have that limiting mm -hmm. language in there. So it'll be even stricter than health. Yeah. Yeah, it, it isn't it's not even all of health. At this point we're because the rest of it follows our normal process and although we sometimes get a few delays we can work through that but this is such a huge time sensitive project that we don't we don't want to get bogged down and so we're going to we're going to write it specific to the to the new outpatient clinic okay thank you thank you chair anybody else have any questions any comments uh, I'd like I'd like to say that I really do applaud the efforts of uh, our hospital administration for getting out that information on those testing strips I haven't even seen it in the news by any other organization and I applaud the fact that we're right in the beginning of the line to uh, try to take care of our patients and I, I'm glad that happened. Okay, if there are no other comments, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, December the 17th at 1 o'clock. Ms. Councilor Vasquez. Yes, um, the announcements, I would like to ask uh, Secretary Ford, he wants to, has an announcement for the Council. Oh, certainly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to take the opportunity with the all our most counselors present to let you know we're transitioning some duties within administration and so Taryn King will be the primary contact uh, liaison uh, as Kanan has been for uh, questions uh, special projects issues just a variety of things Todd Enlow uh, will handle things like routing reports uh, some legislative matters in our office so I just wanted to let you all know and there, there's your point of context uh, primarily with Taryn so will they send us all their Counselor yeah we'll send an email around well, yeah. make sure Gail gets it so absolutely okay. the election commission are they are they reporting today or tomorrow I, report unless today. unless uh, they will report tomorrow yes. I don't think I've seen it on the I, I, didn't look. I didn't see it on the is it on the, I, I attended the election commission they're not in Harvard State if we'd be here to report the rules okay so is that I mean is that going through for sure there's Walk, Councilor Walking Stick, would you share what you just said? Uh, I, make, I went, attended the election commission there night, and uh, Harvey Chapin said he'd be present to answer questions due, due to the special election. That's great, but it's not on the agenda. Yeah, it's not it? on the agenda, but they're going to be here. Then. Do we need yeah. to issue a, an invitation or anything? In, in, in as much, my understanding, and I, I wasn't at the meeting, my understanding is in as much as there's a, a, the special election resolution is on your agenda that. Uh, Mr. Chafin will be here to answer questions. So, that, that'll happen before the special meeting, right? Correct. And rules. Rules. It's part of rules committee. Okay, and uh, Shelley, you will send a, uh, a, a a reminder or an invite, so to speak, that we maybe a to request. It. Yeah, a request that we hope. To see <laughs> okay. Lots of Any anything questions. else? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Austin? Chair. Uh, thank you, Councilor Crittenden. Uh, the, uh, since, since we're talking about um, Kanan's position and you're, you're going to be fulfilling his role, all of us have special projects that are going on in our communities, um, and Kanan's real familiar with those with those projects. Um, are, is, are they going to be able to fulfill those? Yes, there's been extensive discussions about what is pending, and, and Taryn always pitched in in any case whenever we needed some additional uh, back up on those projects so I don't think there'll be any issues but we'll just good communications will solve anything so okay. and Terry, if you could could you send us your contact information oh, yeah. I'll send it to Gail so everybody gets All right. it. thank you thank you thank you yes uh, Dr. Graham I say one more thing too Absolutely. sorry um, <clears throat> I never do this come back to the table if, <laughs> if I don't have to uh, but um, I didn't know if it was all right to mention or not, and I asked her if it was all right, so I wanted you all to know our general health general counsel, Elizabeth Odell. Uh, this will be her last week uh, with health services. 
uh, and uh, I and many people in health are going to miss her greatly. Uh, she's taken a new role uh, with Northeastern Health System as the Vice President of Human Resources. Uh, good opportunity for her, but I uh, sure hate to lose her, and I just wanted, uh, wondered if you all would recognize her for all the work that she's done. Yes. Uh, who will be serving as counsel for our uh, health administration? Miss Chrissy Nemo again. Uh, <laughs> she's going to help us uh, out at least in the time being. Uh, the AG's office is going to step up, and I've already had a couple of meetings with them, and they're going to lend our lend their assistance to us. So. Do you think that this will be a long process to replace Miss Dale? I hope not. I hope not. She's going to be hard to replace, though. Hard to replace. <laughs> Well, we, w we wish her good luck in her new, her new position. Thank you. Any, any other announcements or questions? Okay, the meeting's adjourned. Dr. Grant, yes, sir.